So clinical things are over now. So you are assessing the patient. You are sending for investigations. So these are the basic investigations which tend to we tend to send. So complete blood count, ABG, serum lactate levels, complete blood count. What we can find is we can find leukocytosis. If the patient is very much in the sepsis, we can find neutropenia. So patient do have uh, uh, thrombocytopenia can be observed there. And in ABG, what we can find is increased lactate levels in the ABG and serum lactate also tend to be increased. ABG patient will be kind of acidemic and his sputum culture grams AFB must be sent before initiation of antibiotics. So blood culture and urine culture also to be sent to find whether the patient has sepsis or not. So in modern times, we do RT-PCR for both uh, COVID and swine flu. So both can come with uh, pneumonia presentation. So we are sending the swab for both. And pro for additional values so that patient, uh, if the pro levels are high, most probably it is a bacterial infection. That is the idea behind it. So radiology. So radiology. So, yeah. so what we are finding here is a chest X-ray. It's a PA view. So what we can see here is right upper lobe homogeneous opacity. There is a fissural demarcation here. So it only limits itself to the fissure. Usually pneumonia tends to limit itself to the fissure. So you can find add bronchograms in the middle. So these are the things which are uh, very much confident about the consolidation. So if, the, if you find consolidation on the chest X-ray, it is most mostly caused by a pneumonia. So pneumonia, like pneumonia can be an infected or infected thing, that is a different issue. So this gives a clue that it is a consolidation homogeneous opacity, which contains add bronchogram. So it is a pneumonia. It limits itself to the fissure. Another X-ray here. So another X-ray here. What we can see is an air fluid level here. So it, it is a case of hydro-pneumothorax. You can find a pneumo component here. So pneumo and hydro. This, this straight line is nothing but a fluid there. So air fluid levels are noted in the X-ray. Along with it, you can find uh, heterogeneous opacities. Homogeneous opacity is nothing but it. As we can see, uh, as my arrow points out here, this white thing which shows new markation is nothing but homogeneous. So if there is a opacity with whites and blacks in between them, it is defined as heterogeneous opacities. So both homogeneous and heterogeneous opacities can be there. And what we can see is visual limitation is there. So it is a proper pneumonia with air fluid level. Probably it can be lung abscess. Like uh, lung abscess or a hydropneumothorax with a pleural infusion, like a paranemonic infusion. So here. Next X-ray. Uh, in the X-ray, uh, what we can see is like it uh, looks like an observatory, a normal chest X-ray, but the patient do had symptoms. So what we did is we wanted to do a CT. So X-ray sensitivity is kind of low. So only gross findings we can make it up in the X-ray. So few limited findings we can we can't even uh, depend on X-ray. So what we did is we did a CT here. So what we found in the CT is a consolidation like uh, you can find it in the left side so posterior aspect we can find this air bronchogram the dot in the between it is nothing but an air bronchogram so it, it is a it is a pneumonia actually segmental consolidation so, so here so it is a ct which we can find here is uh, a, a proper air bronchogram with a cavity here so in these patients, we can even find some black color uh, dots here. It is nothing but it is a feature of necrotizing pneumonia. Necrotizing pneumonia, it's a kind of pneumonia. It's very, very serious than a normal pneumonia. So it is a finding of necrotizing pneumonia. So that is the picture here. So another one presentation is a septic emboli. A septic emboli is nothing but uh, an infection from the blood which goes and settles in the lung. So what we find in this chest, uh, CT is, you can find a nodule here. So this nodule, in the serial cuts, you can find a vessel which is going to the nodule. So this is nothing but a nodule with a feeding vessel. It is, a, it is called uh, so a feeding vessel site. Most commonly, it is found in the case of septic emboli. Other conditions can be, uh, like in case of metastasis, in everything you can find it. This case, uh, this grew MRSA, actually. 
So add wrong program, if we want to see in a CT, like I showed in the X-ray, in CT, it, it, it is like this. So you can see the pattern wrong procedure. here. This is the add wrong program. So this is a video. So as you can see here, so this is a post-COVID patient. So this patient had multiple cavities in the right lung and left side, you can see there is a pneumothorax, loculated pneumothorax. So I see the, you can see the ICD here. So this patient actually was a post-COVID patient. He was treated here and with proper antibiotic usage, early antibiotic usage and appropriate selection of antibiotics, he recovered. So this is the follow-up CT of the same patient. So as we can see here, the cavities have all been disappeared. So still patients has few signs of fibrosis here, but it will dissolve by itself. So pneumonia mechanisms. So how pneumonia is caused? Like, uh, does it spread through air or whatever thing it is? We will discuss here. So mostly pneumonia spreads by three ways. So one is through inhalation, another one is through aspiration, and another one is hematogenesis. So Inhalation thing is kind of different and the aspiration thing is also kind of different compared to hematogenous thing. So inhalation, if you are stepping into a place where there is more amount of spores, bacterial spores are suspended in the uh, air. If you are inhaling the spores, you tend to uh, you tend to inhale them inside and these spores tend to cause infections. That is the inhalation rule. Aspiration rule is nothing but if the patient do have uh, colonization of uh, very pathogenic bacteria in their uh, oropharyngeal areas. So if the patient doesn't have a proper cough reflex or the patient is having a, any use of sedations or the patient do uh, have dental caries or poor oral hygiene, these bacteria tend to go inside and they cause an infection. So hematogenous spread is, as the name suggests, the infection basically is from somewhere else and from the some visceral somewhere some other viscera it spreads through blood reaches the lung the septic emboli and it can cause an pneumonia so these are the usual mechanisms so virus can also infect the lung virus also can cause an pneumonia it can travel through any route so that is the uh, thing about virus and fungal spores fungal spores usually very very rare but it can also cause an infection through hematogenous spread or through inhalation so these are things, uh, this is actually a funny, funny diagram, but uh, certain things here give us a clue. Like most common uh, organism for candidate pneumonia is a streptococcus pneumonia. And uh, for uh, examination things, bronchial breath sounds and crackles and auscultation. So egophony, that is if you ask the patient to say E, it will be heard as A, so egophony. Whispering petrol, petrolic B is nothing but if you are uh, putting a step in the area of consolidation, if you are asking the patient to say very, very minutely, like if you are asking them to whisper, it will be heard very much clearly in the area of consolidation and compared to other areas. That is called whispering petroliquy. So it is a very fact, a very classical sign of pneumonia. So tactile parameters, as we all know, the sounds will be increased. So vocal parameters and vocal resonance both are there. So it will be increased in case of consolidation. That is the thing which uh, they are saying here. So types, so types of pneumonia, community, community acquired pneumonia, hospital acquired pneumonia, ventilator associated pneumonia, and aspiration pneumonia. So why do we have to classify pneumonia? So everything is caused by infection. So why to classify them? That is a, that is a point behind the classification. So community acquired pneumonia. So community acquired pneumonia, as the name suggests, it is the pneumonia which is acquired from the community other than the healthcare system. So most commonly in the community, the bacteria which is seen is streptococcus chemophilus, mycoplasma, and viruses. So legionella. So these are the spectrum of and, uh, like bacteria and viruses, which are tend to cause community acquired pneumonia. So community acquired pneumonia needs a proper treatment, which is empirical, and uh, does not require unnecessary use of antibiotics. So for most commonly prepared antibiotic of choice is beta-lactam antibiotics, as we all know. So amoxicillin, this kind of amoxicillin, ampicillin, 
or if the patient requires anything like a hospital admission or anything, you can go with cephalosporin. Ceftriaxone can be used. Ceftriaxone, cephotaxin, ceftarolin, and some cephalosporins. Or if the patient do have an allergy to beta lactam antibiotics, you can go for fluoroquinolones. Neofloxacin, ciprofloxacin can be used. So, if you are suspecting atypical pneumonia, so atypical pneumonia, I forgot to show that it's x ray there. So, atypical pneumonia, usually uh, the pneumonia, what we have seen there is a consolidation. But atypical pneumonia will not be a consolidation. Like it can be like anything, it can be a, it can be a, like a, a, a peripheral pneumonia, a patchy, like a single area of consolidation, or it can be a lower lobe consolidation. So, these are things which we find very common in atypical pneumonias. So in case of atypical pneumonias, you can add macrolide antibiotics such as azithromycin or clarithromycin or doxycycline. So what macrolide resistance is upcoming thing. Give the COVID, in the COVID era, which is the most like azithromycin was the common antibiotic which was abused a lot. So mostly macrolide resistance are tend to be absorbed everywhere. So people most people go with doxycycline. So in, the, in case of atypical pneumonia, doxycycline can be used. So hemophilus influenza, in case of hemophilus influenza, like if you're suspecting any hemophilus influenza in that area, we can go with septriaxone. So severe pneumonia, like patient requires admission in ICU, we can go with uh, primary, can be an ampicillin with cell bacter, with uh, macrolex, or you can go with uh, broad spectrum antibiotics such as levofloxacin alone, if you are suspecting pseudomonas, like if the patient is a known case of COPD, if the patient is a known case of bronchiectasis, you can go for a new, a new uh, pseudomonas coverage. And the antibiotics which cover pseudomonas, fluoroquinolones like neoplox to cover pseudomonas, or cefipine, like fourth generation cephalosporin, that can be given there. Piperacillin desobactam, which is a penicillin, that can be given there. If the pseudomonas is suspected, this can be used. Otherwise, you can go with Ampicillin with cell bacter, like 1.3 grams, which is given six starly, and cephotaxin, then cephotaxin, 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 nothing but fifth generation cephotaxin. So these are things which can be used empirically. So until the culture reports or any reports turn up, we can start them on this kind of antibiotics. So these antibiotics, they do work only with community acquired pneumonia. Can't use them in other pneumonias. So that is the ideology behind classification. So hospital acquired pneumonia have the lower respiratory infection, like if the patient gets admission into the hospital. After the hospital admission, if he develops a pneumonia, that is called as hospital acquired pneumonia. So another kind of pneumonia is have ventilator acquired pneumonia, like ventilator associated pneumonia. So if you intubate a patient after 48 hours, if the patient develops new lung infiltrates. It is called ventilator related pneumonia. So, HCA, like this terminology is taken off now, but uh, just I wanted to bring it to the notice. Healthcare associated pneumonia. So, healthcare associated pneumonia is nothing but if you are, uh, it is not actually uh, the patient attenders who are visiting a hospital or a healthcare facility like dialysis, anything else. The patient attenders who are accompanying, accompanying them. And if they develop a pneumonia, that is called healthcare associated pneumonia. So why we are classifying, uh, like we are putting these three together is most commonly uh, organisms which involved in which are involved in these three pneumonias are most more or more or same. So diagnosis. So diagnosis is not uh, as I described earlier. You can see new infiltrates in chest X-ray. Patient do have fever. Cough with purulent expectorations, like sputum is very much purulent. In case of pseudomonas, we find green color, green color uh, sputum. In case of Klebsiella, we do find red color sputum. So, purulent sputum can be noted there. So, dyspnea, patient will have increased oxygen requirement. And if the patient do have uh, like vasopressor requirement and if it is increased, so that is also a, a clue for uh, pneumonia, which is hospital acquired. And the patient, uh, yes. These are, these are the things which do, which are very common in the symptoms of hospital acquired pneumonia, healthcare acquired pneumonia, and lab ventilator pneumonia. So lab investigations. So these are the predictors which which gives us a clue because in hospitals we do develop many infections. 
So we can't say everything is a pneumonia. So some positive predictors, like which uh, which make sure that it is a pneumonia is, we can find a new opacities in chest X-ray. Like when the patient is admitting, he doesn't have any respiratory symptoms. After admission, he do have some respiratory symptoms. And if you do a chest X-ray, you can find certain opacities which are very much new. So you have a baseline chest X-ray, we can make it sure that it is a new opacities. Or if it is a, if you don't have any baseline chest X-ray, if you are doing X-ray after symptoms appear, you can just ask the patient like past history, anything else, do you have any history of tuberculosis or anything like that? So leukocytosis in the blood. So we have more WBC count and the increased CRP like inflammatory markers and procalcitonin. So positive culture from the respiratory secretions such as putum or ball like bronchial or lavage can give us a clue. So most common causes are VAP, HAP, HAC, HCAP. So Pseudomonas aerogenosa, Staphylococcus aureus, Candida sensitive or methicillin resistant one, Klebsiella pneumonia, Restichia coli, Asmitobacteria. Usually anaerobic organisms are more tend to more tend to be anaerobic organisms are mostly found in case of aspiration pneumonia. So sampling techniques. So how do we confirm them? Sputum. So they ask the patient to spit the sputum out. So the patient doesn't have a proper sputum. You can always induce the sputum using 3% saline or 7% saline. So both are there. So whatever it is there, you can induce the sputum using 3% saline in the early mornings and add them spirit out. It is if the patient is intubated, it is secretions can be sent for gram strain, culture. And everything, fungal smear and everything. So, if we are very uh, like, if, uh, we want to do an invasive procedure, we do a bronchoscopy there. And bronchoscopy, through bronchoscopy, we collect the bronchoalveolar lavage. And this lavage is sent for things which are necessary there. So, uh, these are things which are uh, taken from respiratory, uh, like respiratory system. So, other things are blood culture. Blood culture is usually sent for every pneumonia to go to the cause of sepsis and multiplex PCR, not the talk and must. Multiplex PCR is nothing in upcoming uh, latest technique. It uh, takes uh, multiple, uh, it gives a very rapid uh, uh, rapid results of the organisms and it also gives the resistance pattern. So in case of uh, step MRS suspicion, we can do a multiplex PCR. So not the talk and must. There's nothing but matrix associated uh, laser association ion, uh, ionization. It is ionization technique, actually, basically. Time of flight or spectrometry. So it is nothing but uh, it is an upcoming technique, ionization technique. It can give very rapid and quick results, which are very much sensitive, so that we can pick up the organisms earlier. In case of hospital acquired pneumonia or ventilator associated pneumonia, early uh, identification of antibiotics and their and their pattern of resistance is very much useful for the treating physicians. 